another kind of important storage for uh, data scientists is databases. And we've uh, got quite a few interesting points here. So first of all, whatever flavor of database you like, whether it's Microsoft SQL, Oracle PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, all those databases are available in uh, Amazon Web Services through a service called RDS. So whenever you hear RDS, that stands for Relational Database Service. Um, and you know because all of these databases mentioned are relational databases, uh, you can spin up any one of those. And of course, there's more. I'm just saying that the ones that you're used to working with are available in AWS. You don't have to learn something new if you don't want to. You actually just really quickly, there's a verb you use there that I'm not sure if we clarified what it means, but you said it's very easy to spin up an instance. And yep. that kind of... Uh, phrase. What is what does that mean to our listeners? What is an instance? What is spin up? <laughs> All of those things. Yeah. So an instance is we what we talked about is uh, before we spoke about EC2 instances. Here we're talking about databases. They also need underlying resources. So when you we say when I say spin up an instance, I don't know if that's a, a term generally used in the industry, but that's how I use it. I see oh, it's yeah, like it you're sure. basically you're basically launching a database an instance of a database. Uh, and you're able to put things in there, you're able to store it. And whenever you don't need it, you just spin it down, spin it off. I don't know, turn it off. So you <laughs> yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cancel yeah. it. Cancel. I've never heard anyone say spin down. But yeah, <laughs> definitely spin up. And I think spin it's something up. to do with this idea of like, I don't, I'm guessing Oh, right the now, disc just, spinning. Yeah. A disc actually spinning that you're like, when you press an on button, it's like, woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's spinning, yeah. but... Yeah, I don't think anyone says spin down. You just okay, uh, and that, yeah, that's a really down. cool transition. Close down, yeah. Uh, uh, the really cool transition to um, what I wanted to talk about next is there's also a really cool database on um, uh, Amazon Web Services, which is Redshift, and this is a data warehouse. And so, in order to understand the beauty of Redshift, we have to talk about something uh, called OLTP versus OLAP databases, data storages. So OLTP stands for Online Transaction Processing. OLAP stands for Online Analytics Processing. OLTP, all of those databases mentioned before, uh, Microsoft SQL, Oracle, Postgre, MySQL, um, they're designed for OLTP. You can use them for analytics. Sure, you can go in and create averages of your columns. You can find out you know, the medians, the standard deviations, whatever, build your visualizations and so on, uh, run your machine learning models. But that's not what they're designed for. And this comes to disk, right? So on disk, um, these databases, they store, it's a very simplified um, explanation. And uh, so this is how I understand it. These databases store their rows, like data from a row together. So you might have 15 columns in a row and all of those values of that row, they're stored together. Then the next row, then the next row. That's because that's how they're written into the database. You write them row by row uh, and that's how they're stored on disk. Whereas Redshift or online analytics processing data storages or data warehouses such as Redshift, what they do is they change or they shift, hence the name, they shift how data is stored on disk. Now, all of a sudden, it's not your elements of a row are stored close together of each row, but now elements of a column. So all of the values in one column are going to be stored close together. All the values in the next column are close, stored close together. And why is this important? Well, because when we're doing analytics, when we're doing any machine learning model or any visualization, we're interested in things like features. We're interested in averages of those features, which are columns. We're interested in um, you know, performing operations on columns, not on rows. And because they're stored close on together on disk, that means your analytics and your machine learning is much faster. And that's what Redshift is all about. There's also, basically, I wanted to say that there's also a type of data warehouse which you can easily move your data into and use that for analysis. So if you have you know, terabytes and terabytes of data, that will really speed up your machine learning uh, and other analytics. So that's on uh, Redshift. Another really cool database is Elastic Cache, which is an in-memory type of database, um, really fast non-durable, so you, you can't really store their things there forever, uh, but it's not designed for that. It's more designed for like analytics, uh, real-time analytics, if we're talking about analytics, or you know, it might be um, some gaming analytics or some really fast things that you need to do and you don't really need to store them. Um, another cool database is DynamoDB, completely different type of database. It's non-relational database, it's schema-less, it's server-less. I'm not gonna go into detail about all those things, but basically, if you're looking for a no SQL type of database where you can create your own schema per every row, that's the DynamoDB is your go-to. And uh, it uh, basically scales automatically as you put more data into it. Very powerful type of database. And that's for 
our listeners who might be interested in NoSQL. Um, in terms of, and of course, you can store JSON documents, you can store other types of data. Uh, if you're specifically interested in something that's for storing JSON documents um, in the NoSQL space, normally we would use MongoDB outside of uh, AWS. In AWS, you have DocumentDB with MongoDB compatibility, which is their kind of version of MongoDB. Really powerful. So if you are used to using MongoDB and JSON document storage, then DocumentDB is your go-to in AWS. And those are just some of the databases. There's many more that we could be, or database services and related services, We could more we could be talking about. Uh, but one last one I want to mention is Amazon Glue, and that's an ETL uh, service. So extract us from load. You have all these sources, whether it's the databases, whether it's knowledge scale databases, whether it's uh, your S3 data, like you have uh, CSV files in S3 or something like that, and you want to combine all of that, put it together, do an ATL process, uh, then Amazon Glue is your uh, service to do that. So as you can see, like, even the usual tools in data science that we use and machine learning we use, they have everything covered, everything and much, much more. Like the possibilities are endless. So yeah, um, once you transition to AWS, it's like you can still use the skills you already know. Um, they support that. You can learn additional ones, but basically your skills are very transition, uh, are very portable into uh, AWS services.